Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio here with a quick video to show you how to share your phone's screen in Zoom. I'll show you how to operate the controls on your phone and what it looks like when viewing the meeting on a computer. Now, I do have another video that shows how to share your screen in Zoom on a computer. The most common things to do there are to share the content of an entire monitor, to share an individual program like PowerPoint, or to share a virtual whiteboard that you can draw on. However, if you are used to these features, the controls on a phone are a little different, which is what I want to show in this video. So to do this on a phone, and I'm doing this on an Android phone here, but it should be similar on an iPhone as far as I know, you need to tap the screen to make the controls appear, then hit the share button at the bottom of the screen. And then you will see a bunch of different options pop up, which are slightly different from the ones you had available on a computer. So we have photo, document, web URL, bookmark, screen, camera, and share whiteboard. So let's go through those one at a time. I'll show you how to do it on the phone and you'll see what it looks like on the computer over there. So first I'm going to share a photo. I'm going to hit share, select photo. You can select different locations on your device where you may have photos saved. I'm just going to pick my gallery and select a photo I just took of my floor. Very exciting. And you see I just have the photo displaying on my phone and it's also over there in portrait orientation on the computer. So let's see what happens. If I rotate my phone to a landscape orientation, notice that didn't change anything. It is still shown in portrait orientation on the computer because it was a portrait orientation photo to begin with. So if you want a photo to appear full screen for people viewing on a computer, you need to make sure it's a landscape orientation photo. So I've taken a separate landscape orientation picture here. I'm going to go to share photos again, select my gallery, select that most recent photo I've taken. And notice that when I'm holding my phone in portrait orientation, even though this is a landscape orientation photo, it's sharing my screen in portrait, so everybody's getting these black bars on the top and bottom in this really tiny photo. But if I rotate my phone to landscape, then it's going to make the photo full screen for people viewing on a computer. Note that you can annotate the photos, so if you tap the screen, you will get this little pen icon in the lower left, and then you can then use your finger to draw on the screen the default is this kind of thin green line that is hard to see, but you can change between pen, highlighter, and change the color and thickness of the line here. So I'm going to change that, say, to a thick red line. Now it's a lot easier to see here, and you can also see it on the computer over there. To stop sharing, you just tap the screen again. You actually need to back out when you're in this drawing mode, so you need to click the little pen icon to stop drawing. Then you can hit the stop share button down here to stop sharing your photo. Now, if you'd like to share a document that is not a photo file format, the controls are very similar. I'm going to hit Share, Document. It will let you browse to different places on your device where you may have documents saved. So I'm going to filter for documents here and click some PDF I had saved. Looks like this is a weather map from a winter storm last year. And again, you'll see this is going to show up on the computer really tiny when I'm in portrait orientation here. But if I rotate to landscape, it's going to take up more of the computer screen. And again, just like I did with the photo, I have the annotate option here where I can click on the image and I have this pen icon down in the lower left that will allow me to draw on the image. Let's keep going down the list and here's where things start to get a little weird. So there is an option to share a web URL. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between doing that and then just sharing your phone screen and using your web browser to go to a URL. I guess this is a little more direct and lets you avoid sharing other things that might appear on your phone screen. So I'm going to click web URL. It gives you a little box where you can type the URL in directly. So for example, I'm gonna do, I don't know, cnn.com. Hit share. And it's going to, it looks like it's actually opening this in directly in Zoom. So this didn't open Chrome on my Android phone. Zoom sort of has its own built-in web browser, I guess. So I have now opened CNN here, and you see the mobile version of the site is appearing over there. Now this can get a little confusing because sometimes it's not clear how you're controlling the site or where the Zoom controls went. So you see I was scrolling there and my Zoom controls had disappeared. And if I click on something, say US, and wait a second, the zoom controls disappear, and it's not always totally clear how to make them come back. So I'm scrolling again, and my zoom controls are, there we go. So when I scroll up, the zoom controls come back, but when I'm scrolling down, they seem to go away. So it can be a little difficult to figure out how to stop sharing once you're on a website here. And again, you also have that annotate option where you can draw on the website. 
that's going to appear on the shared screen and then it looks like when you're in drawing mode you can't scroll anymore so if you are in drawing mode you try to scroll you're actually just going to mark the screen up a bunch so if you need to scroll again hit the pencil icon to make sure you back out of the drawing mode and then this is interesting the ink doesn't stay where you drew it on the screen on the website it stays the same location relative to your physical phone whoops so as I'm scrolling up and down here, that ink is just kind of going to move over the page. So if you try to circle a word or something, so say I wanted to annotate this, which again, I can't figure out how to get my zoom. There are my zoom controls. If I want to circle the word podcasts here and then back out of the drawing mode, you see it moved it. So it's not going to stay on the word. So that's probably not really ideal in terms of how you would want to use this to annotate a dynamic website where you're moving around. So next is the bookmark feature. And again, I don't have any saved here. It looks like these are bookmarks that you create directly within Zoom. So not bookmarks that you might have saved separately on your phone's browser. So there is an add bookmark button here where you could add a website if you know you're going to want to be able to access that quickly in a future meeting to share it, then that would save you from typing in the URL using the share URL feature. You can, again, you can put the bookmark in in advance and that'll allow you to access the website more quickly. So next is the option we're all probably thinking of when you hear share screen. It just shows what's actually on your phone's screen. So this is similar to sharing the contents of an entire monitor on your computer. You hit the share button down here, hit screen. The first time you do this, you might get a little pop-up notification asking for permission to let Zoom access the screen. So here I get it again, blah, 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 cancel or start now. And this is then going to just show your phone's actual screen on the computer. So you do have this tiny little thing down here in the bottom left that again kind of likes to disappear that is now where you access the zoom controls to stop sharing so it's different than what it was doing before when i was sharing the website where that would appear when i swiped up and down now i have this little kind of translucent arrow in the bottom left corner but otherwise this would allow you to operate on your phone swipe around open different apps and everything and that's going to show everything on the computer as well again to stop sharing there you have this little transparent icon in the bottom left. It looks like you have to swipe it, not push it. So I swipe that. And again, you have annotation. So you can have the pen drawing and everything, and that's going to appear on the shared computer and the stop share button here to stop sharing. Now, the second to last option here makes the least sense to me, share camera. I am not entirely sure how that is different from just turning your camera on. So I have my camera off right now, but you can see if I hit start video, then you're going to just be looking back at me from my phone and I believe there is a way you have this little toggle icon up here to switch to the forward facing camera instead so now you're just looking at my wall and that's what everybody else is going to see in the meeting and if you hit share and then say select share camera you get a little notification that your video is paused during mobile screen sharing, but now it's just sharing the same camera view. So I'm not entirely sure how that's different. I have a pause camera view up here. And note that if I had had my video on previously, which I didn't, I'm going to stop sharing. So say I'm going to leave my video on, switch back to the camera that's facing me. And again, see there's my little view of myself down in the lower right here on mobile. There's what everybody else would see on a computer. And now if I go back to share and say I was going to share my screen again, start, start now, it turns your video off. So you get this little notification that your video is paused during mobile screen sharing. So I assume this is a limitation of the processing power on phones or something, but you cannot simultaneously share the screen and have the camera feed on when you're doing this on a phone. You have to choose just one or the other, unlike the computer where you can keep your webcam on and share your screen at the same time. And then finally, you have the whiteboard feature, which is very similar to what's available on a computer. You can click share whiteboard, and this just gives you a blank slate that you can draw on. I actually have an entirely separate video that goes over all the features of this in more detail. You can find that linked in the playlist in the description. So as always, I hope you found this video useful. I have a lot of other tutorials about teaching and learning online with Zoom. You can find a playlist for those linked in the description below this video and here on the end screen. If you have a question, a comment, or a suggestion for another tutorial, please leave a comment below this video. Thank you.